Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome back to my C++ series. Today we're going to be talking about enums in C++. So enum is short for enumeration and basically all it is is a set of values. If you want a more practical definition, then all an enum is is a way to give a name to a value. So instead of having a bunch of integers called ABC, we can have an enum which has the values A, B, C, which correspond to integers. It also helps us define a set of values so that instead of just having an integer as a type, which of course you could assign any integer to, you limit which values can be assigned to what. So without complicating things, that's really all that it is. It's just a way to name values. It's very useful for when you want to use integers to represent certain states or certain values. However, you want to give them a name so that your code is more readable. At the end of the day, an enum is just an integer. However, in your code, it looks a little bit different and it helps to keep your code a bit cleaner. Let's dive in and take a look. So suppose that I had three values that I wanted to take care of. I had A, which I might set to zero, B, which I might set to one, and C, which I might set to two. So I have three values to take care of. And then somewhere in main, I might use my value and I might set it equal to one of these three. Later on in my code, I might have some code to check what the current value is and then perform some sort of action. This is fine, however, it carries a few issues. First of all, these ABCs are not grouped at all. Somewhere later in your code, you might have a D or you might want to declare A again, and suddenly this is a bit of an issue. But essentially the biggest problem here is that these aren't grouped at all. Furthermore, they are just integers, meaning I can assign something like five here and suddenly this doesn't make any sense anymore. We want to be able to essentially define a type which can only be one of these three and is also grouped in some kind of fashion, which is exactly what enums can be used for. So instead of this, I can have my enum, which I'll call example, and then I can list off which values I want to have here, such as A, B, or C. Instead of having an integer as my type, I can now use the enum name as an actual type. So I can write example value. I'm going to change my integers to be lowercase here just so that I can use my enum values properly. And you can see that I can assign my value just like this. If I try and assign something else, I'll get an error because it has to be one of these three. Now, these are just integers at the end of the day. Keep that in mind. I can still do a check. If I, if I revert this back to B, I can still do a check such as value equals equals one because B does carry the value one. If you hover your mouse over this, it'll even tell you that B is one. You can actually specify the value of each of these variables as well. If you don't, by default, the first one will be zero and then it will increment one by one. To specify a value, you just set it equal to something. So I could have this as zero, this is two, this is six, whatever you really want. If you start from a number that is not zero, such as five, and you don't actually specify the rest of these values, you can see that this will be six and this will be seven because it will basically just start from five and then keep going up. One other thing that you can also do here is specify which type of integer you want this enum to be. And you can do so by writing a colon and then the data type. So for example, an unsigned char. Enums by default are 32-bit integers. However, you can see in this case, there's no need for us to use a 32-bit value. We could, we could get away with using an 8-bit integer such as an unsigned char and we'd be just fine. And suddenly this is taking way less memory. You won't be able to assign this to something like a float, of course, because the float isn't an integer and it has to be an integer. So let's leave this as a char for our example. So there we go. That's basically what an enum is. It's just a way to give a name to certain values so that you don't have to keep dealing with integers and be all over the place. Let's take a look at a real world example of where you might use an enum by looking at our log class that we started writing in the how to write a C++ class video. If we jump over here to our log class, you can see what we actually ended up doing was using three different log levels and they were just integers here, zero, one, two. Hopefully you can see that this is pretty much a perfect candidate for an enum because we have three values which we just use as integers to represent a certain state. In this case, which log level our log will actually display. So right over here inside this log class, I'm going to create a level enum. I'm going to create error, warning and info as possible values. So we're basically mirroring this. As a matter of style, I actually like to explicitly write equals zero. However, that's definitely not required because it will start at zero by default. But again, just something I like doing to help the readability of the code. I'll get rid of these now. Instead of having an int as my log level, which I could still have, of course, I could still assign this to info. And since an enum is just an int, this would still work. However, in this case, I would be able to set any value to log level, any integer value to log level. And I want to restrict it to just being these three. So I will actually set this to be level. Note that this restriction that I've created of it must be these three 
purely a syntactical C++ kind of compiler enforced thing. You can get around it really easily. It's not something that can't physically be set, of course. In this case, our enum is just a four byte integer. It's just four bytes of memory. You can put anything you want into that memory. However, by setting the type to level, you're restricting the code, so to speak, to actually only allow levels. I'll change my set level to take in a level. Now, when I do these checks, they will still work just fine. I just need to change log level error to just be error. Because m log level is this enum type, which is an integer, I can still do comparisons between them, which is very, very useful for things like this. I'll change this to say warning and I'll change this to say info. The other thing that changes here is the log.set level. Instead of being log.log .log level error, which used to be that integer, it now simply becomes log error because we have an enum value called error inside our log namespace. Note that this enum level is not a namespace in itself. There is something called an enum class, which we will talk about in another video. However, just for regular enums, this level isn't really a namespace, so you can't use it as one, which means that this error warning and info simply exists inside this log class. And you can see I can set it to something like warning as well, and everything's fine. Now, you might've noticed the error doesn't actually work and it gives us an error. The reason this is happening is because we actually have a function called error as well. So same name. And I've set this up deliberately to show you what happens if you have a conflicting name. Now in this case, unfortunately that wouldn't work because when we try and refer to things like error here, it doesn't know if we're referring to the function or not. So we definitely can't have something called error here, unfortunately, if we wanna have a function with the same name. So for now we can just add a level prefix to the enum, which by the way is very, very common practice so that we know exactly what we're referring to since this name doesn't really mean much in the scope of things so i'll set this equal to level info this to level error this to level warning and this to level info and now of course i don't need this i can get rid of this and just set this equal to level error if i run my code you can see that i would get the result that i expect where only error is printing of course because we've set our level to be error so there you go enums just essentially exist to make our lives easier and to make our code cleaner they are just integers behind the scenes and you can use them pretty much in any way like integers there are many many uses for enums which we will cover in future videos we'll definitely talk about enum classes as well in another video but essentially whenever you have a set of values which you want to represent numerically an enum is probably the way to go i'll see you guys next time goodbye